So here are the hoggets and the auntie years. Hello. How are you with your beautiful piece of hay in your mouth? You're such a sweetie. An ear feather. Now, I have two empty buckets because I've been spreading seeds, which is part of being an, a regenerative farmer is to continually try and diversify the sward of what grows in your fields. And this isn't what organic farmers do. Organic farmers farm without sprays and a lot of times they use ryegrass and clover only. So that's what a vast majority of organic farmers do is without fertilizers and herbicides. Whereas a regenerative farmer is aiming to improve the soil and the biodiversity above and below the soil. So over there, put the buckets down a minute. Over there, I've been spreading seeds to continue to raise the biodiversity. That's where the horses were. You can see this near ring feeder is where the horses are at the moment. They're inside at the moment because it's very mucky. But um, I'll show you some of the spreading of the seeds by hand that I do that will increase the biodiversity. Isn't that right? Yeah. So, and the sheep think, and the sheep think I'm, I've got food in my buckets. In some senses I do, but it's your future food. Isn't that right, you beautiful young fellow? Yes. Isn't that right? Yes, sweetie. Oh, and you're jealous. You're jealous of an alpaca. So you can see, this is our driest field up here. No, sorry ladies, there's nothing in those buckets. All the seeds have been spread. I'm gonna get more seed to spread. But during the muckiest time, you can see the sheep have left very little impact in around the bales of hay. The only place has been when it's um, at gateways. You're such a character. Herding sheep you are. Look at that bourbon flyer, ooh. Rain is coming and then uh, it's gonna be warming up later next week, which is perfect for seed ger germination. So this is why I'm sowing seeds by hand right now. Much to the joy of the sheep following me everywhere, thinking that I have lovely buckets of food. Sorry. Sorry, your feather, they're empty. Yeah. I'm gonna go get more seed now. So I have my able assistant here, and these are the buckets of seeds that I'm sowing. There's a mixture of grasses like Yorkshire Fog, um, Timothy, uh, um, orchard grass, and then you have, there's some of the herbs. You can see these are some of the herb seeds there. And then these tiny black ones, those are clovers. There's another herb seed, that little black long one. So there's a huge variety of seeds that do all kinds of different things. There's bird's foot trefoil in here, plantain, uh, lucerne, uh, all kinds of different things. And so just spreading them around like this, letting them grow where the horse is trampled. You can see the horse is trampled here. But where the horses trampled earlier in the year is already growing green grass. That's my manure heap. So, and the more recent place where the horses are is right where that hay bale is. So that's the most recently ground munched. This area here is at about three weeks ago. Sorry, this is, so you can see there's uh, one, two, three, four, five bales. So that's this section here. That's about five weeks ago. So um, five weeks ago, four weeks ago. So each section is beginning to grow back from where the horses were. So that would have been back in January, all the way over there. And you can see the grass is coming back beautifully. So now is the perfect time to re-sow so that I can continue increasing the diversity of the sward, which will continue making soil health a priority. And that's what regenerative farming is. Uh, it's not about being organic. It's about regenerating the soil 
which is regenerating the biodiversity both underneath the soil, in the soil, and above the soil. And that's what essentially regenerative farming is. It's a different management plan and a different way to do it than organic or conventional farming, which uses fertilizers, herbicides, etc. So, and this field has a lovely bank of beech trees that was planted by my great, 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 one more, maybe five great grandfathers. So those would have been planted in the 18, uh, thirties maybe, not sure. Could be even older than that. I'm not very good at, uh, but they're old beech trees. Been in the family for a long time. There's an ash tree. This is a crab tree that's covered in um, ivy. I have to prune that off. More ash trees and more crab trees all in there. So it's all about biodiversity. And this is kind of what my grandfather carried on, do, is, was doing and I'm carrying on with um, biodiversity and regenerative farming. Though it didn't have that name back in those days. He always planted, my grandfather always planted his hedgerows were a huge mixture, including crab apple, which is not included in hardly any um, hedgerow diversity uh, programs. Inca is definitely very helpful about spreading seeds, aren't you? You're keeping your toes warm in the seed bucket. So she'll jump out and now run around and spread seeds. Isn't that right? You clever pup. Yeah. Okay, spreading seed time now. With Inca's help, I'm doing a special mixture. These are Salad Burnet, which is a beautiful little seed. You can see those seeds there. They're a beautiful shape. Uh, and I've got a bag of that that I, I got from Cotswold Seeds. So I'm mixing these up with another one that is very, very popular with pollinating insects which is the lesser knapweed. Moths, butterflies, bees, bumblebees, all kinds of insects love the lesser knapweed. So I'm gonna mix these up and spread them in the field to uh, increase the diversity. Now, on the farm we already have salad burnet and we also already have the lesser knapweed and the greater knapweed and several other knapweeds. We have a huge diversity. I'm just trying to increase the diversity in this one particular field that used to be, when I came home, was completely polluted with uh, thistle. And so uh, it's one of the fields I've been working on the longest to increase the diversity. So I'm going to cut this bag. This is the lesser salad brunette. Sorry, this is the lesser knapweed. I'm mixing my names up. So that's going to go in there. This is a, a really, a, a little tubular seed. You'll see what I mean. I'll show you um, what it is. Just want to make sure I get them all out. So this is the lesser nap seed. I mean, it looks like any kind of grain that uh, a small grain that you would grow as a crop. So this is the lesser knapweed. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm mixing, you can see now that's a mixture of the salad burnet seed and the lesser knapweed seed. So 
really getting it going. Now, Salad Burnett is a great, great, deep rooted herb that any farm that's doing regenerative farming practices should have in their sward because it's a deep rooted herb that is great during times of drought. So these are the, so it's a beautiful mix of seeds there that I'll add to the list of, to, to the varieties that I've been sowing earlier. So that was those two, the lesser knapweed and the burnet, salad burnet. Two great additions that I'm gonna now add to my field's diversity. Isn't that right, Inca? Yeah.